Helix Chromatic. The Grove of Dawn. Beautiful, don't you think? I suppose it's a question of opinion, really. Oh, I find them quite fascinating. They're hermaphrodite. Did you know that? No. Must make their sex life rather confusing. Mm. Mm. Come on, back you go. Oh, sorry, would you like me to pack you up a couple of dozen? No, thank you. There's no trouble. I, no, I, 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 I tried some once. Uh, tasted rather like uh, elastic bands that have been marinated in garlic butter. Oh, tin, probably. These are the real thing. Totally organic, high protein, practically fat free. You don't know what you're missing. Well, it's all the same. Bye, Miss Cambridge. Well done. Thank you. She's very good. She? Yeah. Started. No. When I was uh, away, <laughs> well, if you remember, they had me working in the gardens. Acres of cabbages. I must have been slaughtering hundreds of these little beauties a day. Anyway, the food in that place wasn't too hot, and suddenly it struck me. Fifty million Frenchmen, right? So I went to the library, read everything they had. I was hooked. But you're not telling me this is a hobby. You're asking, do I make money? With production costs and freight fees, I'm pulling in around 1500 a trip. Oh. Always were good with figures amongst your other talents. I'm just a businessman now, believe me. And you still haven't told me why you're here? No. Well, actually, I'm investigating a murder. A murder? My God. The victim was a man by the name of Guy Featherstone. I believe you knew him. Good God. You don't think I had anything to do with this? Oh, I really don't know, Mr. Austin. But suppose you tell me where you were last night between midnight and 4 a.m. Inspector Crabbe's telephonic apparatus. Can I help you? Crabbe's elsewhere, I take it. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. He's interviewing a Mr. Leonard Roston. Roston? That doesn't ring any bells, uh, but Crabbe thinks he's connected, does he? I'm not sure exactly. A bit more on the cuff. A bit more what, sir? Oh, you're picking me up in a meeting. He's coming over. Do you want a word? No, no, it's all right. Uh, just uh, keep me informed, Pinkney. And Pinkney? Yes, sir? No need to mention I called, understood? Pinkney? Yes, sir. Understood. Who was that? Wrong number, sir. I used to, yes. But it was in rather a different line of business in those days. Well, Gov? Yeah, well, as well as can be expected, thank you. No, Gov. I mean, when are you going to give me the full SP? Full SP? Ooh, speaking in code now, are we? Pick me up in a couple of hours, would you? I just want to know what's going on. What's going on? I am now proceeding with my inquiries, Pinkney. That's what's going on. And you can tell Mr. Fisher that next time he calls, can't you? Yes, 
getting worse. Not even talking to each other tonight. So all this about Brad. It's like a morgue after a major air disaster. You can hear a pin rust. Just a temporary fluctuation in the trading cycle, isn't it? Have you been at IFT again, Steve? Well, yeah. It's actually. the restaurant called Morgan. He likes to keep up with the opposition. You have to do so much of everything. I got to be ready for the rush. Two steak pie, one lamb, two salmon, and the lady says, you know, it's not on the menu, but could you please just have two lightly poached eggs on toast? Uh, pie in the sky. Oh, Mr. Crowd, hello. What have you got on at the moment? Oh, a nice little rubber tubing account up at Bywater. Oh, well, not to worry. We'll manage. Now, that is the sort of business to be in. Whatever happens, people will always need rubber tubing. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I wouldn't say slow, exactly. What one? Now you come to mention it, I hate to see it. And Mrs. Trapp, your husband says he's unavoidably delayed. Well, give him my love and tell him if this keeps up, we will be past within a month. She says that's fine, sir. And you're not to worry about a thing. <laughs>